Welcome to the Sunshine Parenting Podcast. My name is Audrey Monkey, and I am your host. For more than three decades, I've been a summer camp director, and I've had the privilege of working with thousands of children, teenagers, young adult counselors, and parents. I really enjoy sharing stories, tips, and ideas to help others who care about young people raise a generation of kind, self-reliant, optimistic kids who become thriving adults. If you're interested in summer camp, parenting, or happiness, you've come to the right place. In episode 36, I'm chatting with Kelly Petrangeli, author of Project Me for Busy Mothers, a practical guide to finding a happier balance. Hi, Kelly. It's so great to have you on the podcast today. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. So I have been reading your book, which is called Project Me for Busy Mothers, A Practical Guide to Finding a Happier Balance. And I'd love for you to just share a little bit about yourself and how you came about to write this book. Sure. Yeah. Well, I am Kelly Pietrangeli. I'm the creator of Project Me for Busy Mothers. And I am American, but I haven't lived in America since I was... Oh, gosh, I've lived over half of my life now in the UK. Um, so I live in London with my son, uh, with my husband and our two teenage sons. So I've got an 18-year-old and a 15-year-old son. And I started Project Me for myself. Like, really, it was a Project Me for me. If you ever would have told me 10 plus years ago that I would be helping other women to sort their lives out, manage their lives better, keep a better balance, I would have honestly laughed in your face <laughs> because my own life felt really, really chaotic and out of control. And it wasn't until I got an idea one day to start breaking my life down into different life areas and just start to pinpoint what's not working in my life and you know what can I be doing to improve things. And I, I made a, a project folder and I actually, on the, on the front of it, I put a sticker and I called it Project Me. <laughs> and so it just, you know, it makes me laugh now to see my book in bookshops and to see it everywhere, to see Project Me. And now it's out there for everybody, you know, like it's, it's, and women all over the world are now creating their own Project Me's and using my tools and strategies that I used to pull my life together. And um, I'm now in a position where I mentor mothers and I run retreats and I run workshops and online programs. And yeah, it's just a complete turnaround from, like I said, my life 10 plus years ago. Oh, well, that is so wonderful. Well, I have loved your website for years. I've been following it and it's so colorful and uplifting and just going to your website, I can see how it makes it makes you feel better just going there and you you really break down and simplify the process. And um, I love how in the book, you especially encourage people not to try to fix everything, but to just focus on one area. So just decide, you know, is there one area? Is it your health? Is it your you know, time management or productivity, you know, what is just one area that you want to tackle? And because I think sometimes it can, as you say, we get so overwhelmed with our kids and our homes and our work and everything else. So it's just a wonderful book. Now, um, we've been talking about off, off the podcast about it. I did get it in America. So it's published in the UK right now, but through Amazon, I was able to order it. So people in America can also get your book. Yeah, absolutely, which is really exciting for me. Yeah, I love it. I have about 50% of my audience. So I guess it wouldn't be 50%, but there's like half, seems like I've got half UK, half American, but then a lot of Australians as well. And then, you know, a scattering of English speaking mothers that are living all over the world. Um, but yeah, so it's really exciting for me that it's in America too. Okay, so question for you. It just, it seems to me based on reading your book, that parenting and life as a mother in the UK is pretty similar to life as a mother in America. Would you say that that's the case? I would say so. I wasn't sure when I first started, you know, the website and I was writing my first blog post. I was thinking, gosh, you know, is this, uh, are these universal mother themes or not? And it just turns out that whether you're in Australia or New Zealand or South Africa or America, or in the UK, mothers are all facing the same or really similar challenges. Definitely, you know, the parenting challenges, the, um, you know, the challenges in their marriages, 
the same health concerns, the same um, productivity and time management for sure. Everybody feels like they're chasing their tail, that they're, there's never enough hours in the day to get it all done. So yeah, very, very common, common for all of us. So one of the themes that I want you to talk about, because I, I really believe this is true, is the whole concept of taking care of yourself and you know doing things that make you feel better and happier is really good for your family and for your kids. So why don't you just talk about that a little? Because I think sometimes mothers get so caught up in just thinking that being a good mother means just pouring out your entire self and all your time and all your energy on your kids. And as you and I have both learned now that we have older kids, that just doesn't work. It's not sustainable and it doesn't make for good mothering. So why don't you talk a little bit about your philosophy around kind of taking care of yourself? Absolutely. Well, um, you know, with that, we all know that expression, when mama's happy, everybody's happy. And the mothers really do. We set the temperature in our homes. So, you know, if we are frazzled and short fused and, you know, feeling stressed or feeling unhappy, feeling a bit unfulfilled, all of that, it, we, we give off this energy, you know, it's actually an energy that our, our, the rest of our family pick up on those vibes. And then, you know, they'll behave, you know, in not such a great way either. So it, the more that we can take care of ourselves, it's an absolute gift. For our family, if we are sending out those positive vibes, if we're feeling happy and fulfilled and, and, you know, not stressed and all of that, it just makes, it just makes the whole family happier. Everything runs better. Um, so taking care of yourself, we've all heard that expression to put your own oxygen mask on first before you're, you know, anybody else. And it is just so true. You're not going to have your best energy to give your kids, your family, if you're not in your best energy yourself. So there is just nothing wrong with going and doing something for yourself. It's not selfish at all. It's a gift for your family. You know, interestingly too, so the kids who are growing up right now in general don't really want to be adults because they have seen what it looks like to be an adult and they don't think it looks very good. It doesn't look like adults are having that much fun. So the other aspect of this, besides just having a happy family, is you're modeling for your kids what a thriving adult looks like. And if you don't show them that being adult can be fun and you have friends and a, you know, all these good things that make life good. Your kids aren't going to want to grow up and be adults because it doesn't look great if an adult to them is just running around frazzled, upset, stressed, you know, gaining weight all the time because they don't take care of themselves or whatever it is. It just doesn't make a, being an adult look appealing. So I, that was with my kids. Um, it was funny because I have three daughters and they're now all adults. And I remember when everybody was little, I used to like to go for a run, like on Saturday mornings or something, and my husband would stay home with the kids. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, is this okay just to like leave my kids for an hour, you know? And it was my, you know, I'd listen to my music, I'd be out there breathing the fresh air, I'd get all these ideas. It was just like my time. And what was really amazing to me is as my kids started leaving and going to college and kind of starting their adult lives, they all like to run to um, just when they want to just sort of re, you know, they're not, we're not all like competitive runners, but, and I remember thinking the first time one of my daughters texted me, Oh, just went for a run thinking I, I showed them how to do that. I showed them that that's one way to make yourself feel better, to just kind of, you know, regroup and everything. And it really was one of those moments where I said, that was good to show my kids one way that I use to kind of feel better. I love that. I love everything you just said. I, it's so true. We're not just doing it for in the moments that everybody's in a better mood. We're doing it for the long term to, you know, these, these kids are going to grow up. They're going to go out into the world. And when they're still living under our roof, which is such a short period of time, my grandmother told that to me when I was young. She said, the period of time that your children are still living under your roof feels long when you're in the thick of it, especially when they're really young. It just for the days feels so long and all of that. But she 
said, it goes by in the blink of an eye. When, when you're in hindsight, you know, when you're older and you look, you have so much more of your life to live after your kids have flown the coop. So it's another reason to make sure that you keep having fun, that you, you know, if you're, if you're married, that you know you try to work on the connection in your marriage because they're going to leave and it's going to be just the two of you. And if all you've ever had as your connection is just driving them to soccer and, you know, picking her up from there and dropping him off there and all that stuff, and that's your only kind of, you know, glue um, and you don't ever have a date night you never do anything just the two of you or you don't you know have enough of a social circle and all of that you know it's going to be you yeah um, I think that's my next book actually it's going to be oh. about pre preparing for the next chapter of your life um, but um, what I was thinking when you were saying that is that the kids, yeah, the things that you, the things that you're gifting them. And I love that, that your daughter, you know, your daughter's, you know, running and seeing that through you. My son, who's 18 now and is doing really big exams. He's in his final year of school doing really big potentially super stressful exams and he knows that I meditate every morning. I use an app called Insight Timer, which I absolutely love and he said, I want to start doing that so we got the app on his phone and I recommended some apps that that would be good and it turns out there's loads for students and stress and everything right there in the app so he's now waking up and meditating too, I call it meditating, when you don't even get out of bed, you know, you just stay in bed and meditate um, and he's now doing that too and he totally got that from me and yeah, you, you you know, Audrey, when the kids get older, you can see what they've gotten from you in good and in bad. <laughs> you, oh, can yes. see the, you can see the things they've gotten from you that are not so great. And, um, and you can definitely see the things that they've picked up from you that are, are enhancing their life because they, they got that from you. So, yeah, I love that. So that's the other part. It's Project Me, but like you said, it benefits everybody. Okay, so Kelly, why don't you just talk about the different leaves you have? And mm -hmm. I'd love to hear what you end up finding you spend the most time talking with moms about. Which are the areas that seem to keep rising to the top? So why don't you talk about the different the different leaves of your Yeah, project? they're called petals, the flower petals. petals. Um, so the Project Me Life Wheel is the tool that I use to help mothers to really simplify the process of figuring out what's not working in their lives and what is because sometimes we don't pay and we don't give ourselves enough credit for what is going well and the project me life wheel um you you do a little assessment once a month i mean i think once a month is really important and you um look at the eight key areas of your life and those are represented in these eight colorful flower petals which is on the cover of my book and it's also um a free download on my website and you do a little assessment of these eight key areas and I, I give you prompts and so it gets you thinking about how each area um, of your life is running right now and then you mark it one through ten and a ten does not mean perfect like we are never aiming for perfection like that's just crazy making a ten just means it's going as well as it can be right now it doesn't need any specific focus this month you know, and then you'll see some other areas where you think, oh, gosh, I, good thing I did this assessment because I hadn't even really thought about the fact that my child really needs some extra support right now and I need to find that for them. Or I hadn't really re realized that my health, I've, you know, I've not been getting up and too busy and I haven't been, you know, exercising. And it's this thing where you can just see every month what needs some attention. And then it, that's the great thing about not doing it as this big kind of, um, you know, exercise where you're looking at your whole life and trying to figure it all out at once. You're just looking back this month, what needs some extra focus. And then my action sheets, which you can print out on the website, are, are all about taking your ideas and putting them into action. So there's an ideas into action sheet. You write down the life area you're going to focus on and what are three small step actions you're going to take to improve that area of your life. And it really is that simple. It really is. And to answer your question about um, which area is the, the biggest, so I run an online program um, every so often called Goal Setting for Busy Mothers. And in that program, everybody does, um, at the first week, everybody does the Project Me Life Wheel tool. They figure out which area they're going to focus on for the next, um, it's a four-week program. What is the one area of their life that within one month they want to get into a much better place? And productivity is productivity and time management is the one that I would say 70% of everybody who's doing the program, the others are kind of, you know, scattered amongst the other life areas and like 70% want to improve their productivity and time management because they realize that if they got that one area of their life into a better position, it would have a positive knock on effect on the rest of their life too. And they would realize that, Oh my gosh, the kids would probably, um, you know, 
be better behaved and all of that if, if I just had some systems in place where we knew what chores everybody had to do and we had mornings that just flowed easier when we're getting out the door for school and if I just meal planned then I would know what we were going to cook and if I you know th- this kind of stuff and it's just they realize that that's just that's such a key part of a busy mother's life and if you can get some systems in, in place it really makes the other areas that you thought were a mess kind of magically kind of clean, clean up as well. Oh, absolutely. Gretchen Rubin, I don't know if you follow her. I I do. She has a saying, she talks about outer order produces inner calm. Mm -hmm. And so even if you're kind of a spontaneous, disorganized kind of person, once you have all these kids and all this stuff to juggle, really having some outer order is really necessary. Because when it's just you, I think you can be a little more, you know, you can just... Absolutely. I I meet mothers who are like, I know, I just really don't like, you know, having a routine and systems and all that. But the Mm -hmm. thing is, what they don't realize is that they're going to have more freedom if they put... A few when you have kids, you know, you need they need those kind of routines because then you're not repeating yourself all the time with the same things. Right. And they realize that when they put these simple structures in place that they're resisting at first, that actually it gives them more freedom. Right. Oh, well, this has been just so wonderful. I don't even know how long we've been talking because my timer isn't showing anything. So I think we I want to make sure that you have a chance to tell our listeners where to find you, your website and everything. And then I will, of course, put the notes and links in our in the show notes from this podcast as well. So tell everybody where they can find all this great information and your fun worksheets and everything. My website is myprojectme.com. And on there, on the homepage, you actually see the the where you can sign up to get the Project Me Life Wheel tool sent to you. And then you can just use that over and over again. And then that also gives you my Monday Motivator newsletter. So that's designed for mothers. A different, I, I focus on a different life area every week. So it gives you like a little tip and a new blog post. You can hit the blogs tab on my website and you can find like my blogs are not just missives about my life. Like my blog is actually identifying what are the the key challenges that mothers face in these in these eight different life areas and you click on which life area you want to focus on and there's there's help and support there and then there's another tab called action sheets and those are the principal action sheets that that really help you take your ideas and and put them into action and then i was just i did the book because you know sometimes trolling around on a website you know you can kind of like get lost in the minefield of all these different things and you can end up possibly feeling more overwhelmed than when you started and i did not want to do that like the last thing i ever want to do is make a mother feel overwhelmed because i'm here to here to help mothers stay out of overwhelm so the book is the solution the book is you know you've got it in your handbag you have it on your bedside table wherever and um, you do the, the life will exercise in the beginning and then you head to the chapter the life area chapter and you hear examples of like how I've overcome certain struggles in each area of my life and I give lots of ideas and inspiration and strategies um, and it's out it's out now on audible too so you can actually get the audible edition yeah I've been in the, I've been in the recording studio for two days get a load of this I have to tell you this funny story so my publisher sends me a link and says, um, I, I'm sending you a link to an American voice actress who we think could be really good to be the voice of your book. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I give it a listen. And she's pretty good because I'm thinking I've lived out of America for half of my life. My, you know, my accent's a little bit both, a little bit, you know, British and American. And, um, and I'm going, yeah, she's pretty good. So I go onto the Project Me Facebook page and I put the link on because I want some of my followers have a really active, um, engaged private, you know, I mean, not private, it's, it's, it's not even, I don't even have a private group for Project Me because my main page for Project Me is just so great. Um, so I put it on there and everyone's like, uh, hang on, why is it not you reading the book? And it was so funny, Audrey, that it hadn't even occurred to me, like, wait a second, why isn't it me? I just figured they needed like a proper actress to be doing this. So they said, go back to them. Like, we, we would want to hear yours. We wouldn't want to hear an actress. So I wrote to my publisher and said, just putting this out there. But my tribe are kind of saying like, it should be me. And so I had to audition for the part. <laughs> of your own yeah. book. Exactly. So I had to go down to the recording studio, read a chapter of my book. And I thought, this is hilarious. Like I'm, I'm auditioning to play the part of me. I hope I do a good job. I was trying to get my accent right now, <laughs> you know? And um, so anyway, I got the part. <laughs> got oh my gosh. Is- <laughs> Would have been hilarious if I didn't get the part. Um, and then, uh, and then I spent two days in the studio reading it. 
and um, and it's out now on, on Audible and people are saying it's like having a really good friend in your ear um, while you're folding laundry, while you're driving, while you're commuting, doing all of that. Oh, so um, I'm going to download another- it. I'm going to download it today because I love audiobooks and regular books mm. and I will definitely, and I would like listening to you as I go about my Aww, day. That's really very sweet to say. Soothing, and I think this is why mothers are responding so well to your message is because you're not, and I love the whole, you know, doesn't have to be perfect. Just fix one little thing. So Kelly, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We'll have to do it again. I'm definitely going to share your great work. I read very few of my emails that come through that are sort of the, you know, from blogs. I read yours every week. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you. And it's because it's uplifting. It's short enough where I can just, oh, this is great. And um, and so I think that is what I want to just pass along to the listeners too, is that it's it's one of those uplifting, helpful things. It doesn't feel overwhelming. You make things feel less overwhelming. So thank you so much for the amazing work you're doing. We are so appreciative of your uh, your dent, your the positive dent you're putting in this world. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I so enjoyed chatting with Kelly and loved the message that she sent to our mutual friend, Jill, who introduced us, who said that we got along like a quote, house on fire, unquote. So thank you, Kelly, so much for being on. And thank you listeners for hanging out with us on this episode of the podcast. There will be links and notes and everything else that you need that we talked about, like how to get Kelly's book in the show notes for this episode, which is episode 36. So you can find everything at sunshine-parenting.com. Um, as a reminder, I would love it if you would just take a moment to write a rating and review of the podcast on iTunes. I am so appreciative that I have 12 ratings as of the time of this recording. So thank you to those of you who have gone in and written a review or put a rating. I really appreciate it. I'm going to leave you with a quote from Kelly's book, Project Me for Busy Mothers, a practical guide to finding a happier balance. She says, if there's a voice in your head telling you that it's selfish to focus on yourself, here's my mini pep talk. It's better for your child when you're happy and you look after yourself. It'll give you more energy to give them and make you calmer and more fun to be around. Imagine what a great role model you'll be for them. If not for you, do it for them.